Okay, today we're going to be tying the CK bait fish. This might be one of the most effective bass patterns that I'm aware of. In fact, it, it's one of the six patterns that I always carry in my, my smallmouth box um, and in all my, my lake boxes when I'm going after largemouth bass. And uh, I think it is something you should carry in different sizes and especially in different colors. Today we're going to be tying one in more of a golden shiner style imitation. And for that, we're going to be uh, using a gold tail. Now this is a very special uh, tail. This is from Eastern Trophies. I'm going to have a link for Eastern Trophies down in the description so you know where to find these. But some of your local fly shops may also be carrying these as well. Uh, they come in a pack of multiple tails so that you can tie many flies and they're made from a special material. This material is called uh, like ultra suede. And what's good about it is it has basically the same flexibility wet as it does dry and it is very very durable. It's uh, kind of a rare material in the, uh, the fly tying world and, and how it behaves. So it's important just go ahead and, and get the original from the source and save yourself a lot of time in trying to, to imitate. For my hook, now this is not the standard hook for this pattern. Um, most people are going to be tying this pattern you'll find on a Gamagatsu B10S. I happen to be tying this on a fire hole. Uh, this is an 811 size 2 and the tail is a size 4. The reason why I'm tying on this hook is rather than a B10S, one, it is barbless, but it's, it's almost what you would consider to be a tactical barbless, so it's very sharp. And if you'll notice, this point comes up a little bit of an aggressive style. This helps pin the fish, and you lose less fish when you're fishing barbless. The other thing is, is I like the longer hook shank in comparison to the B10S. Now, some people just size up their hook to get the same effect but I think this fly needs a longer hook shank than what you'll find on the same size B10S hooks. But that's my personal preference. Feel free to experiment. Um, you know, definitely tie one on the B10S, uh, tie one on you know, a, a hook maybe with a longer hook shank and see what you like. The next thing that I'm gonna be tying with as well is the chocolates body wrap. Uh, this is the same type that you may find for like a, a game changer fly. Uh, it's on some other fly patterns as well. And typically when you get it in a package, you'll get it where you have kind of both ends that are sewn and a kind of a solid middle. Now for this fly and most flies that you're going to tie with this material, what you do is you simply cut the material down the middle. So rather than one piece, you really have two long pieces. And we're going to tie with just one strand. So I'm not going to be tying with this strand. This strand I'll use to tie a, a second fly later. You'll notice I have a pretty good length. Uh, I have oh, close to a foot long of, of material. And I'm going to end up putting several, several inches around this hook, more than what you may think. So make sure you've got plenty of room to work with. The next material that I'm going to need is some, um, uh, I use lead-free wire. I know a lot of people use lead wire just to, to make it heavier. I, I prefer lead free. Because this is a size 4 hook, I'm going to use a 0.02 wire, uh, something that's not as thick. When I tie with a bigger bait fish, I'll use something like a, a 0 0.025. I'm going to need some super glue. Now, the super glue is, is important. I always use uh, the Loctite Ultra Gel because it gives me more time to glue in. And we'll see that when I go to put on the tail. Uh, I'm also going to be tying with some thread. Now I'm just tying with white thread. And this thread is uh, UTC 140. I tie with white because I can change the color of the thread later on with a, a Sharpie marker if I need to. And honestly, you don't see much of this thread except for at the very end of the fly anyway. The last uh, thing that I really want to point out is uh, a, a toothbrush. Um, this particular tool is probably the most useful thing for this fly. Now, people are gonna use many different tools for the same task, but what we're all trying to do is this material here needs to be combed out constantly 
while you're wrapping it, you know, palmering it around this hook shank. You'll see that when I get to it. I find that a, a, a stiffer bristle toothbrush like this works just about as well as anything I've found. There are some special dubbing combs out there made of metal that are phenomenal, but they're really hard to find. And um, honestly, this is just an old toothbrush of mine that, you know, rather than throw away, I just repurposed. And I, I use this for a multitude of different things, but, you know, especially for this fly pattern. All right, so let's go ahead and, and get into it. So uh, for this, the first thing I'm going to do is just lay in a thread base. Let's come down the hook shank. You know, standard procedure here. And I want to lay a nice amount of thread all the way down because it's going to give me something to have my super glue bond to. And I'm going to come back to where that hook shank just starts coming down. That's where we would typically stop. I'm going to come a little bit farther. So I'm going to come down maybe about a quarter or a fifth. Um, probably about a quarter of the way bending around this hook shank. Again, all this is, is giving me something to have my super glue bond to, to hold this tail in place. I'm going to do open spirals to come back up to in front of the hook point. The open spirals give me texture. Again, this is all about securing our tail in place. So now I have my bait fish tail and I need to attach this to the hook. Because I am going to be putting in some wire, I'm actually going to start modifying this tail. I'm going to cut the ends off to make them blunt. This is going to give me a material bump, but that actually works in my favor because I'm going to end up putting the, the wire right in front of this and then tapering off of that. The other thing that I want to do is now that I've, I've cut that bluntly, you can see that I've got this kind of like square end here. Well. I'm going to rebuild a little bit of that taper by cutting slightly on both sides. And that just reshapes the tail. This is my preference. Other people may tie this differently, but this is the way that I prefer. So now when I go to wrap it around the hook, these two tags are going to end up folding down the length of this tail and that's going to stabilize this tail. You'll see that here in just a second. So what you want to do is take this short end, right? So you see where the notch is, is almost in line with this part. I'm going to use that for my top and I'm going to bend that material over. I'm also going to take the other side and fold it up. Now you don't have to be perfect here because all I'm doing is getting this in position for me to put some thread wraps around it. I also want to make sure that I'm in the right part of the hook. I want these kind of tabs to be right about where that bend of that hook starts. So hopefully you can see that. So once I'm in that position, then I'm going to put just around the very tip of this material a couple thread wraps to lock it into place. Okay, so now I'm ready to start applying my super glue. So I'm gonna tilt this up because I always start on this tab first. Take my, my gel super glue and I'm gonna lay it along the inside of that kind of long tab. So now what I'm gonna do is go to lay it straight back as much as I can along this material. And the idea is it's going to make this front section of the tail rigid. That's going to help prevent the tail from wrapping around the hook. We'll show that here in just a second. So now I want to go ahead and I want to do this side. So the same thing. I just want to put super glue along the tab, try not to go overboard, just a thin bead right down the center, especially on these smaller tails. This one gets folded up 
and I want to try to lay it on the opposite side of the other tab, as close to it as I can at least, and kind of press it into place. And I've done, if I've done this correctly and my hook size is correct, when I go to fold this tail around, you'll notice it doesn't quite reach the hook point. That lets me know that, you know, this is really the right hook size and that I've, I've put this far enough back. If this is too far forward and this tail is easy enough to wrap around, you're going to find every few casts that you're going to end up pinning this material on your hook point. So just something that I've learned to have this come back. And if you notice, by having my, my thread come up about a quarter of the way down that bend, I've actually been able to have super glue along it all the way back on this material. That's also going to hold this material to that hook point. If I didn't have that, if my thread ended here, this whole section may want to ride up. Um, and so, so those are tips to make sure that this holds correctly. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my material clip just to hold that tail straight back. And the next part, I'm going to come in. And again, I'm going to do some more trimming. The top of my fly looks pretty good. I want this to kind of be just above the hook. Um, but the bottom of it has a little bit of uh, too much material. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to come in and cut part of that away. Just a small amount. What that's gonna do is make it easier when I come in with my thread and start wrapping back. It's gonna make it a little bit less uh, of material to hook around. So as I come back, if I start noticing this material starting to bunch up, then I would come in and I would do a relief cut. Um, so what I mean is, and I don't need to on this one, but if this material started folding over and bunching up, then you just come in with your scissors and you just do a cut on it. You see it, it started to, but it really didn't uh, do too bad. So I'm going to leave that alone. So now I'm going to do some good tight wraps. Again, this is 140, so I can't cinch down too much. All the way up to just where this material begins to end. And so now this, this tail is nice and secure. This is not, no, no way that's being pulled off, uh, not easily at least. If a uh, fish is strong enough to pull that off, you've got, uh, you got bigger problems. Um, so you've got a pretty large fish that just hit the tail of your fly. So we're gonna go ahead and put on our, our wire, right? Uh, this is pretty standard if you've done this. I kind of wrap a few around, then I'll work it right back to the material. And I, I'm going to put maybe six to eight wraps. If you have problems like I'm having right now where it's spinning, that's where I use my debarb pliers. Come in, hold it in place. Five, six, you know what, lucky number seven. Not a ton of weight on this one. You can experiment with that. This is small enough, you can just break it with your fingernail. Uh, but what I want to do, the purpose of these wraps, is to get this fly a little heavier in the midsection. It's going to help this thing to sink evenly the way you might find a, uh, a dead fish, which is what this is gonna imitate. So I've got these little sharp bits. So again, my D-bar pliers. If you don't have a pair of D-bar pliers, I highly recommend you invest in them if you're getting serious into fly tying. Not only is it good for exactly what its name suggests, debarbing the hook uh, and saving your vice in the process, it is extremely useful for you know material manipulation. Uh, hackle feathers, this is just a a huge advantage for. All right, so all I'm going to do now is just go ahead and trap in my wire. Pretty standard. Nothing special. 
And then we're gonna bring our thread all the way back to the base here. And what we're ready to do is to put in our body wrap that we've already cut down the center. So this is gonna be a little hard to see, but I'll, I'll describe it. This body wrap has two sides. There's one side that's a little bumpy and one side that is smooth. Um, it probably won't show up on camera, but when you get it, examine it. The bumpy side is the side that you want facing out as you wrap it. The smooth side, you wanna wrap against the hook. So what I'm doing is pulling off a couple of these fibers on the end, and what that's going to do is give me a tie-in point. So once I have a couple of them, actually, some of the body wraps have this issue where as you pull it, it starts pulling off. So to get around that, if you find you have one doing that on you, not all of them do it, uh, it's strange. I, I have some of them that are just fine with just pulling a couple off. Cut along and very close, almost like you do with a hackle feather, feather uh, where you cut in a little barb. Um, what that's going to do is stabilize that thread and make it um, where you can actually tie it in without it pulling out on you. Like I said, not all the body wrap does it, um, but I've noticed some that do. So if you have that problem that I just had, you know that's a good tip for you. All right, so we're gonna lay that up, capture that material, standard, you know, wrap forward and, and, and capture that material quite well. All right, there we go. That's good and trapped in, unlikely to pull out when I start doing my wrap. So now I'm gonna wrap all the way forward, right up to the hook eye, put in a half hitch on my fly. I'm gonna use my bobbin holder so I can let go of my thread because everything else about this fly is gonna be in the, the wraps here. So I'm gonna show you the first few wraps and then I'm gonna uh, skip forward because this part can be rather time consuming. And the first things I'm doing is making sure everything is oriented together because you may have it where it's spun. And if it's spun, as you wrap in, you're going to end up trapping. So it's important that as you go through, make sure that you're like, here's another example. It's kind of spun. Um, so take your time and make sure that everything is oriented in the same direction. That's going to give a cleaner looking fly at the end. The other thing is that I have my body wrap still in the kind of plastic bag that keeps it from going out and getting everywhere and end up getting tied into a big old knot. So now that I'm ready, I'm going to work my way around my hook point and do very tight wraps. I want these wraps to be right up against, if not slightly on the wrap just before it. This is going to take a lot of wraps to advance up your, your hook shank. Now, I'm gonna pause here. So I just did what, about three wraps maybe, maybe four. And I'm gonna bring in my toothbrush. The, uh, the, the official fly tying dubbing body wrap brush. That's what we're gonna call it. Not, not an old toothbrush that I no longer use. And I'm gonna start working that material back. As I wrap forward around the next side, I'll do the same thing. Notice the difference. These fibers are now all in line with one another. They're not as, as clumped up. Um, this is also gonna start interlacing these previous wraps together. And so we're gonna do maybe two wraps real tight. I'm putting tension on this. You'll notice my hook point is starting to get pulled down. Make sure your hook's very tight in your vise. So you can put nice tight wraps one after another. and start advancing. So we've put in, oh, how many, about, about 10 wraps, and we're not even up to the hook point. I wanna pause here again. You see how this is 
tangled by taking your time as you tie this fly and combing it out as you go, you are going to save yourself a lot of work at the end and you're going to have a fly that is denser. We're going to talk about the density of this fly at the end and why that's important. It, it mimics the soft body of you know a, a small bait fish that when the, the bass hits it or, or the fish hits it, it, it's going to make it a more realistic feel, which hopefully will translate into the fish hanging on maybe a half second, maybe a second longer, but hopefully long enough for you to be able to set that hook. Okay, so you get the idea here. We are going to skip ahead in this process because like I said, this is time consuming. Um, and I'll, I'll uh, start up again as I'm closer to, to finishing off the fly. All right, so we've skipped forward a little bit and we now have it where we're, we're at about a hook eye length from uh, the hook eye. Um, we're not finished yet. We're, we're still going to be doing the exact same thing that you saw before. We're doing a couple of wraps around and brushing the material back. I wanted you to see that, you know, we're repeating this technique all the way up the length of this hook shank, right up to the hook eye itself. Um, and you'll see. And as I'm going through, I'm making sure this material is straight and in line. Right, let's get that nice and tight around there. Two, three wraps. Trying to keep it as tight against each other as I can. The denser I keep this material, the more realistic it feels when a fish bites into it. It gives a little bit of a soft body. And the more that the head of this fly is going to have a, a nice wide cone. And that is going to make the fly dance. When you do short strips with this fly after it's trimmed, because believe me, it's not going to look like this big old marshmallow when we're done with it. It's going to be nice and streamlined, but it is going to have incredible action under the water. It will dart from side to side. You can really make this fly do some cool things. And it really gives it a very unique action that not a lot of flies out there can, uh, can achieve. All right, so we're getting very close. So I'm going to make sure I've got my material good and combed out. And I am pretty much right up against that hook eye. So now I'm ready. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. So I'm going to come in with my scissors and cut out some of these fibers. So I'm going to pull this away and you'll, you'll see what I've cut here in just a second. All right. So see that? I've made a gap. That's going to be my tie-in point. It's going to allow me, and again, I cannot emphasize enough how nice it is to have a rotary vise for this fly. Put my uh, bobbin holder back, take my thread, and wrap around this material. Put a couple little pieces of that flash built into this body wrap. I'm trying to get forward. I'm not going to let it. This is standard. Anytime I'm tying in a material, I tie it back and I tie forward. I'm going to do that about three times. And that gives me almost like a little figure eight. And this material is good and, and trapped in. So now I can come in and I can cut it pretty close. Now I'm just going to wrap forward. Right up to my hook eye. And come back. Now you may have, just like I do, a couple of these fibers sticking forward. I'm going to show you how to clean that up. Uh, it doesn't matter. The fish aren't going to see it. It's not going to have zero effect on the performance of the fly. But 
I don't I don't like the look of it. So you know, I want to make it look nicer. So the next part about it is, is that I'm actually going to bring my thread back into this material. I'm grabbing that material and pulling it back to make sure I don't have any fibers going forward. Come back almost to hook eye length. This is making that head of my fly that much more dense. Once I've kind of come back to the point where, you know, I'm, I'm maybe a half a hook eye back or, or almost a full hook eye back, now I'm going to go ahead and while whip finishing, build a little bit of that cone coming forward. Pull that nice and tight. I can trim that off. So, we're going to do this next part really careful so we don't catch our thread on fire. We're going to use a lighter. So all we're going to do is, we're going to come in, touch it real quick, pull that lighter away. Come in, touch it real quick, pull that lighter away. And notice now, most of those fibers are gone. If you have some fibers still being a little bit the pain and sticking out and you want to get real close heat up your bobbin by the way this is a great way to clean the inside of a hook eye I'm not doing this right on the fly um, I want to heat it up now I can take this and stick it inside right up against and that really cleans up that now you see all that material has pretty much been singed and melted right back into that thread we didn't catch anything on fire in the process. That's always a good thing. And uh, we have a, a cleaner tie-in point. So now we're ready for what is probably the hardest part of this fly, and that is the shaping and trimming of this main body. Now I've done my due diligence as I've come through, and you'll notice as I gently tease out all of these fibers, that they're pretty much all in line. But if they're not, now's the time to come through and, and make sure that they're good and combed out. I comb both directions, comb it back. You end up with this large kind of mush yeah, or marshmallow looking puff ball here that we have at the end. Um, and that's kind of what you want. It should look a little crazy. I tease my fibers kind of perpendicular to the hook shank for this next part. I don't do it all the way back by the tail. I keep those fibers kind of pointed back. Just kind of the main middle sections. I want kind of sticking straight up and away from the hook shank. That's going to allow me to trim it a little bit faster, a little bit more even. So I'm going to use a nice sharp pair of straight scissors for this cut. And um, it's nice if they have a little bit of a serrated, this has a very light serration. Some of them have more of a serrated edge. That's gonna help catch the fibers. And we're gonna cut in a uh, square. So we're gonna come in the top. Now I'm just gonna cut it on the hook vise and I'll, I'll show you what this looks like. Um, and I'm gonna come back at a slight angle. So rather than just coming straight across, I'm gonna come down at a slight angle to give me a little bit of a taper. Now, you can always cut more off, but you can't put it back on. So, you know, kind of start this a little bit farther away from where you want to be when you end up. That's going to save you in the long run. Try to come in at the same general angle, the same general length. This next one, we really want to make sure that we are careful with our scissors that so we don't hit the hook so we don't doll our scissors out. We're going to start exposing that hook. And now we're going to trim this side as well. All right, let me take this off the hook real quick, or the other vise, so you can kind of see what's, what's happened. See that? We kind of have this weird square. That's our starting point. Now that we have it in a square, we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut off the corners. This is going to give us a rough 
I emphasize rough circle. And as you do this, you may want to come back in, start brushing the fibers. This is going to get some of those uh, cut pieces out, as well as start exposing. See, I'll brush forward real quick and then kind of brush back. You see now how it's not as even as it was before. You can see kind of these. Um, that's because some of those were, were trapped down. And so now I'm going to just start working my way around. I'm at an angle. Working my way slowly around the hook. Start rotating it as I do so. And notice I'm not doing anything with this tail. I'm only working the material back to the bend of the hook. That's all I'm focused on at the moment. It's the main body of this fly. Cutting around. Each time taking just a small amount off. Making sure it looks even. It has that ever so slight taper going back with these straight pair of scissors. All right, let's brush out this material. Uh, do this in a space that can get dirty because you're going to have this stuff fly everywhere. Alright, what are we, how are we looking? It's very helpful if you look down the hook shank to see where you're at. Um, that's a nice start. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from my straight scissors to my curved pair of scissors. I like the curved pair, especially for doing the tail and for doing some of the finer shaping. I'm just going to come in and again, I want to trim a little bit closer. Uh, so my preference on these flies is to actually have them trimmed pretty close to the hook shank, not this giant puff ball that I started with. I like them nice and, and lean. I think they move in the water better. I think they catch more fish, but that's my preference. You can play around with the shape. I know some people that like their CKs a little bit fatter. In fact, some of them may watch this video and be like, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're trimming too much. Uh, play around with it. You can start, you can fish this fly where it's a little bit wider and fluffier. And if you find that it's holding too much water, because this stuff soaks water like a sponge, um, that it's hard to cast, that it's not giving you the action you want, take it back, put it on the vise, and give it a, a light haircut. Uh, that's what I did. I kind of played around until I found the shaping that I preferred. Again, we're only focusing up to where that hook is. We're not really going into that tail yet. I want the profile of my fly on the main hook shank very close to done, very close to, to fully trimmed before I touch this back material. I'll show you why here in just a second. All right, let's comb this out. This is starting to look a little close. Give it good brushing. I brush forward. This is really gonna tease out any long fibers. See, I got a couple of them. Some of those are from the tail too, so I wanna brush those back. Now when I come back with it brushed out like this, I can get an even more dense cut. What I mean by dense is that all of these ends are getting closer and closer to the exact same length. It's uh, very streamlined, gets a very slick kind of wobbling action in the water. 
and uh, has that, that dense feeling that, that more closely imitates something that I've made of actual, you know, meat uh, than, uh, than, you know, some feathers tied around a hook. You know, when a fish goes to bite this, it doesn't immediately collapse and feel like a hook shank. It, it feels like something that they wanted to eat. So again, it might mean that they hang on to it for a split second longer than they would otherwise. That split second might make the difference between setting the hook and not. All right, so you, you can trim this too much and we'll it down to nothing. I got a couple of them that are just basically a tiny little pencil at this point. And I've gone too far. So it's always nice to take a break, brush it back, really see what it looks like. I have a couple fibers that were trapped and now have been untrapped. Still coming in with my, my curved scissors a little bit. I'm gonna switch over to the straight scissors, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Switching over to straight scissors. So I can maintain my angle a little better. So I think the main part of this fly is good and trimmed. I'm pretty happy with with the shape of that. I'll show you what this looks like. Yeah. See that? Pretty round. Eh, maybe it isn't, you know, 100% perfect, but it's pretty round. That's going to give me a, a nice even action. But I still got this crazy little fluffy bit at the end. Well, let's brush it. I want to trim this, and I'm going to do it with my curved scissors. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the fly over and I'm going to make sure I have a good trim on both sides around this hook shank. I don't want any of these fibers, the long fibers that I want to stretch back along this tail, I don't want any of them up near this hook because what will end up happening is they'll kind of get wrapped forward and it'll look weird. You know, I want, I want that nice and trimmed around, nice and clear that's going to give me a fly that when it's wet, that uh, looks a little bit more natural. Okay, so that, that part is done. Next part about this is I want to start trimming the back parts. What I'm basically doing is I'm going to start forming a, a taper to this material coming back along this fly. So notice I started cutting here and I'm slowly cutting my way back until I get up to the actual body. And this is also in some ways thinning out the amount of material because if you get too much material back here, it can kind of like fan out and start getting real poofy. And again, that doesn't look that natural, you know. And we want something that kind of has a sleek look. It almost looks like a, um, if you're familiar with conventional fishing, like a fluke. And one of the super flukes, you know, that, that, that swimming soft plastic look. Okay, so I'm getting to a point where I've got so much trimmed material, it's hard to see, comb it out. Immediately we'd start to see a little bit of a difference here. So we're going to keep trimming our way, coming in good angle on the tail material, trimming our way back. I want to be able to keep this natural taper all the way back. Now when this stuff gets wet, it's going to slick down, but I want it I want to help that slicking back. All right, this side needs a lot of work. Again, try to not cut a ton at once. You're just kind of whittling it down real slowly. It's going to give you a 
nicer looking result than if you just come in real aggressive. And I appreciate you guys staying with me this long. I know it's a longer video. Uh, certainly could have shortened it. But I think the trimming is so important that it, it's worth showing you guys kind of in real time what it looks like. I think that's going to give you a better idea of how I trim. And, and maybe that'll help you as you go to, to trim yourself. So I'm going to tease out the main body once more. And all I'm doing here with my straight scissors is I'm looking for those long fibers. Just trying <coughs> trying to get it even. I don't want to come in too much more on the uh, around the body because I'm pretty happy. Notice I've got a pretty good hook gap clearance. That's important. Make sure that you're not crowding your hook point with this material. And now when I go ahead and I tease back. You know, this is not that big of a change. I've got my fibers cut well enough that, you know, it, it, it's maintaining its shape. It's maintaining its profile. It gives me a lot of confidence that when this goes in the water, it's going to look like this. If they're all real puffed out when they're in the water, it's going to change the shape of the fly. And I want to control that shape right now. I want to make sure that when I go to fish this, I know how it's going to look when it goes in that water. And I know the, the shape and the profile I'm looking for. All right. That's pretty well trimmed. I'm just going to come in one more time along this tail. And now I'm trying to cut with the curve, the full curve of the scissor, down. I've already kind of trimmed this the way I like. You want to be careful not to cut too much when you do this. So this is just one final kind of trim. Another trim around this hook point. One more brushing out. And I am pretty happy with the way that looks. Oh, I got a whole bunch of stuff all over my vise. The nice thing about the toothbrush, you can clean your vise. <laughs> all right. Let me pull this out so you can take. Looks always nice. I look down. If I notice that there's any weird hump or anything like that, then I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll trim it. But this looks pretty good. I'm, I'm fairly satisfied with the overall dimensions of this trim. And I'll put that back into the vise because the next part, and actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a trick. I'm gonna put it into the vise like this. And why did I do that? Well. Pretty simple actually. I want to put in some head cement and I want the head cement to penetrate into the front of these fibers a bit. Before I do this, I'm going to pull out a red sharpie. I'm going to color in just the front. I like a little, a little red highlight. Oh, this probably. This might show up on camera. Anyway, I've got a, my red, and I'm actually going to take, while I have it in this position, and just color down. And let me pop it out of the vise. I'm making almost like a little red triangle underneath. Just something to a little bit of a gill, a little bit of a belly, teasing into these fibers. So it's not just on the top of the fibers, but it's into that body wrap. It's going to hold the color a little longer, keep it a little more vibrant, make it look a little better, and I'll comb that out so that you can see the way that looks. All right, let's put that back into the hook vise. So you can kind of see how that, that is. All right. I'm going to take my 
head cement. Get a healthy gob. Make sure that that is around my thread. As I do this, this head cement is going to start getting sucked up right into these fibers. This is exactly how I want it to because it's going to form a little bit of a stiff front cone. And that is going to make it a little more water impermeable by the front. It's going to force the water around it, and that's going to create some hydraulic effects on this fly to make this fly kick sideways. And that's what gives it some of its extra action. You'll see similar things built into musky flies. Of course, musky flies are much bigger than this fly, um, but it's the same kind of idea forcing water around it. All right, that's, that's pretty good. Now you notice now I've got this really nice, clean, even head. By the way, it's important anytime that you use your bobbin, clean it afterwards. That way it stays clean and you don't get a ton of material build up on it. So now you can see how that looks. I'm going to put it back on the device in a regular fashion because there's one more little detail I want to put into this fly and then I'll call it finished. And that is black sharpie and I want to put a nice line right along the top. So I'm going to come in and a nice line straight down the fly. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Kind of tease this back, and that is the CK baitfish. Hopefully, you you learn something from it. You're get inspired by it, and you you give it a try. It really is one of the more effective patterns that I know, and uh, is something that that I love to fish in both salt and fresh water.